35 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and we go from now until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. There she is once again. Ex-wives keep cropping up on me. Oh, you've got more that you talk to? Well, no. Let's see here. Do I tell? Let's see. I don't talk to my first ex-wife. I don't know if she's even still alive. My second ex-wife, of course, was you. Well, excuse yes. me, you. And then Susan, I talk to upon occasion, upon occasion. And I hardly ever talk to my current wife. So uh... <laughs> she's just right next to the other room, right? <laughs> so you know. So how are you, Ronnie Bennett? I'm okay. How about you? Yeah, how's everything in the world of uh, of old people? Because that's who you write for and uh, do a very good service to. Uh, um, I just finished writing a piece for Wednesday about mm -hmm. the coronavirus and old people. Mm -hmm. Because old people are more vulnerable mm -hmm. people and people with compromised immune systems. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's there's there's no vaccine for it. And but but we all know I just wanted to repeat it for everybody and remind them we all know what to do about washing your hands and yeah. all this other stuff, you know. Yeah. Well there did you read about I also included this at the end just for fun, that China in Wuhan where the virus first expressed itself, mm -hmm. they built a one thousand bed hospital in 10 days yeah, i know i've seen it but operating it's kind of like days. they're kind of like they're 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 uh, prefab like blocks uh, you know uh, but, but i mean it doesn't matter still the point it, and there was some video of of workers there were it took seven thousand workers mm -hmm. and there was some video of them in big boots up to their knees standing with in concrete, getting concrete spread, you know, with, with standing in it up to about their mid calves. But you see, here's the reason: in China, they get stuff done because only one guy has to say, "Do it." Right? <laughs> well, if we had know. to build the same thing here, it would have to go through Congress, and everybody would be dead before they laid the first. So, are uh, you lobbying concrete. for um, uh, an autocracy? Uh, no, I'm not lobbying for it, but I'm just saying things get done. Yeah. You know, I mean, look look at the uh, the change in China in just the last 20 years. I mean, Beijing 20, 25 years ago was nothing but dirt roads, okay? And now it is a big, modern, metropolitan oh, city. But, it, but there are, what, two or three dozen other cities the same size? Yeah. And what, what I think is amazing is I can't imagine what it takes to feed that many people. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And getting them from point A to all the point Bs the food needs to go to. Well, you do remember those periods of time we heard about in China with famine, for instance. Yes, yes. yes. So, but I'm not talking about famine right now. I'm talking about feeding everybody, yeah, which is... Yeah. Um, and it's... I don't know. I mean, at any time... Gee, I just wanted to talk about what they did with this hotel and how they do food... And all you've got is the downside of it. No, no. The upside of it is, is that uh, number one, the reason what, how they feed everybody in China is there are over five thousand Kentucky Fried Chicken places there. Oh, you know, that's not really the point, but okay. Yum Brands. That's their biggest market. They built something yeah, like. Yeah, but you know that isn't. I'm that just. Isn't... I'm saying that as a joke about how they feed people. Okay. Eventually, it'll kill them all because it's killing us. Okay, so I don't. What what food was it you mentioned? Uh, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I haven't been to a fast food place 25, 30, 40 years. I wish I haven't I had a bite of any of that stuff. Uh, if it were up to Marjorie, we wouldn't ever go to a fast food place. But I introduced her to a fast food place, and every now and then she says, "Go get me some." 
Go get me some what? Popeye's chicken. It is terrific. Probably as greasy as Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, uh, but much better. Much better. Well, not my thing. Yeah, but yeah. She, she but she's fallen in love with that. But that's the only fast food I can even remember her ever eating. Let me turn on my light back here. There we go. Uh, I'll just say on air. Oh, you've got to have the on air light. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not officially on the air. Um <laughs> But no, I was amazed at the, the one thing I feel bad about is when I was in China, we, one night we went out to go eat and we were looking for a place to eat and there was a Kentucky fried chicken and we didn't go in there because, I, and no, well, wait a minute, we I, we really should have because they, it isn't just chicken. They have like, uh, what is it? I think they have um, uh, something that's very Chinese, uh, like geese or something like that uh, in those, in those places. They have a different fare. Why would you go to a place with their own cuisine and eat American? But that isn't a, the stuff in there isn't all American. As I said, they do things like I guess duck. Duck is what they have in there. Yeah. You can get better duck in other Chinese. Oh well, I went and I got Beijing duck. I got Beijing duck uh, in Beijing at the best Beijing duck place ever. There, it's it takes them like four days to make the damn thing. They do in Chinatown in New York too. It yeah. takes four days. Yeah. Yeah, really. I don't, I, I don't need to go anywhere to get good duck because I, I can't. I, I, yeah. What I had in over you know forty years in New York City, Chinatown was just sensational. Oh, you, you're gonna oh, tell you're gonna tell me the Chinatown American Chinatown can make better duck than a restaurant in Beijing? I don't know, but it was really. <laughs> really I got good news for you. Know where to go? This was. And I don't think that. I mean. Just like fried chicken in America at any fast food places, you know, you could throw up from it just because it's, you know, it, it, it's done in the place where it was invented doesn't make it wonderful necessarily. Yeah. Well, I'm all I'm saying is that uh, like we went into a chain, we went into a couple of Chinese restaurants and we went into one one night because we we had just gotten into town and we just needed to eat. So we went to their this uh, shopping area and there we went into this restaurant and there was nothing on the menu that even looked remotely like anything we had ever had in the United States. I mean, I would have thought I could go in there and go, Oh, give me the egg foo young. Give me the egg roll. No. Egg foo young is not Chinese. That's I know. American. I, egg rolls are, they don't have egg rolls either. You know, uh, amazing. Just amazing. Um, also in China, this will, you'll like this. Uh, 7-Eleven, which is famous for one major thing, and that's their Slurpees, the drink Slurpee, the ice drink. They don't, don't have they don't have them in 7-Elevens there because the Chinese don't like ice. Neither do Europeans. Yeah, they. In fact, we started off one of our meals with a glass of warm water because uh, that's supposedly good for you. And and it warms you up and gets you ready for the meal. They think if you drink ice, it uh, it does something bad to your system. I agree. Mm -hmm. So I I never drink ice in anything. Really? I no. do I do ice and stuff anymore? If somebody puts ice in a drink, I'll drink the drink. I don't, but I don't necessarily ask for it with ice. I just like it cold, so I'll put it in the refrigerator. You know. Yeah. Um, whenever they bring me water. In restaurants, I always make them take it back and take out the ice <laughs> <laughs> because it's it hurts. It hurts my mouth Does to it, drink it, something that cold. Really, really? Son yeah. Oh, oh, what the hell? Um, I also don't like bubbly drinks for the same reason. They really hurt. I love. Maybe it's just your system. I love bubbly drinks. I love carbonation. It, I, you know. It's the gift of the gods, so far as I'm concerned. Plus, it makes you belch, you know. No, no. well, I don't know that belching. <laughs> I don't know that belching's bad for you, you know. Well, you kind of maybe don't want to do it in public. Well, I've been known to, <laughs> you know. But anyway, um... <laughs> I'm I'm stifling a comment. Uh, <laughs> It, ever, even in our marriage, folks, and ever since, she's always been rather amused by my grossness. 
I don't know that it's amusement. <laughs> I, I, I know that you're a lady of, 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 of nice things and of, of uh, pleasantries and so on, but occasionally a uh, good belch and a good fart isn't a bad thing, you know? Just not in public. Just not in public, yeah. No. Yeah. In the bedroom. No. Anyway, look. So uh, anyway, how have you been? In other words, how is how we haven't asked you about your health lately? And well, it, I graduated from pulmonary rehab school. Oh, do you get a little diploma? Do you want to see it? Really? Yes. Hold on. Oh, I'll be right on. back. Wait, right we're right gonna. Here. They give her a diploma at pulmonary uh, rehab school. I wonder if they, they're going to do something for me when I'm through with my radiation. I don't know. I know that when they used to have like the two months of radiation, some places actually, you're upside down. Oh. <laughs> you rang a, you, they rang a bell for you. A certificate See, of achievement is awarded to Ronnie Bennett for successful completion of pulmonary rehabilitation program. Very yep. nice. Notice the date at the bottom. One twenty-eight nineteen. 19. Well, what's wrong with the date? This is 2020. Oh, 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 oh. They forgot to change their form. Son of a bitch. It's okay. Not a problem. It's okay. Now, uh, now so what, what, what I can, finished that. Yeah. yeah, what can you do with that? Is What can you do with that diploma? Can you get a job with it? <laughs> what I can do... That, well, let me tell you a story. Yeah. Um, before I left there, there are all these different kinds of exercises and breathing and workouts that we've done. And it really, as I mentioned, I think, on the show in the past, mm -hmm. it's really made a difference in my breathing. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge difference. Yeah. I won't ever be running after the bus in my life again. And I do have to walk slower. But, you know, I couldn't, it, I used to have to stop two or three times to go to the mailbox or the trash mm -hmm. just to get my breath. Mm -hmm. Now, as long as I don't walk New York City style pace really fast, mm -hmm. I can get there and back without stopping and all kinds of things like that. Yeah. So I put together a routine of what I could do to keep up the exercises because if I don't, I will lose the gains that I've made. And I've got to tell you that fear is a great motivator for me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and so I did that and I took it in and met with a couple of the nurses and they fixed it up. They thought what I should do. And we got all that done before. I had my last class, <laughs> and I've been refining it here at home since last week, and here's what happened to me. Two and a half years ago, when I sat in a room with three doctors, and they told me I had pancreatic cancer, Yeah. Um, which is fairly startling, Right. my first reaction was, and I said it out loud. Well, I've just done my last exercise session tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it for years and years and years because I needed to, and it's good for me. And I every moment of it, I'm just not the type. And still, I did it. And because I was in such good shape, they could do the Whipple surgery. If I hadn't been in such good physical shape, they would not have done it at my age. And so I was lucky to have been doing that for seven or eight years by the time that happened to me. But I meant it when I swore that that was it. You tell me I have pancreatic cancer, I am not exercising anymore. Wow. Well, here I am. Here you are <laughs> exercising. <laughs> Every morning, 40 minutes of this stuff. <laughs> So you can't even keep what I thought was a deathbed declaration. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, boy. Okay. I listen, by the way, everybody, she's out of sync again, but we'll live with it, you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. You don't know how to fix that. No, let's not even go there. Let's let it go. Sorry what, about At the up. beginning of the interview, we didn't, you weren't out of sync, and then all of a sudden I just noticed you were out of sync, and I tried to fix it, but there's, I can't figure out how to fix it, so. We'll live with it because I'm I'm in sync and that's all that matters. <laughs> anyway, so uh, it, 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 um, Marjorie has a slight case of COPD. In fact, um, um, she, you know, it's 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 not like yours, okay? And the, her Do doctor. You see me heaving for air. Yeah. 
<laughs> her doctor said it was caused by her years of smoking. Now yeah, that she, can be a cause, but that's not the only cause. But she quit longer than I have, you know, and I'm like 35 and years, 36 years after smoking. But it's not the only thing. I mean, there are many things that causes, not the least of which the general idea is bad air, breathing bad air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it can be many causes. Um, and, you know, smoking is the easy one to say because when people talk about it because it's been so demonized, as I suppose it should be, but they've made it such a, what's the word, a bugaboo. Yeah. Um, that um, it... It takes the weight for anything that goes wrong with people, and I'm not, sh and and it certainly causes lots of terrible things, including, I mean, not just COPD, but heart disease and all kinds of stuff. Right. But um, it can be a combination of mm -hmm. things. It could be something else. It doesn't, doesn't. It, it's not set in stone. It's that's, you know, med. I, I'm learning through my intimate knowledge or, or frequent knowledge, if not intimate, of mm -hmm. the medical profession these days, mm -hmm. that um, uh, it's as, almost as much an art as a science. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of things that can't be said definitively, but that we know is the generally good idea, like don't smoke. Right, right. Well, I, you know, I hear about people smoking and I and or see people smoking, and I just want to say to them, don't do it. It just... You know, I mean, when I quit, that was, I think that was one of the most important decisions I made in my life, you know, and the hardest one to accomplish. I remember you and I quit smoking once, and then we, about four weeks later, we started smoking again. I mean, we, we felt, oh, well, we don't need a cigarette now. Let's just try one, and the next thing we knew, we were smoking again. Well, that's what addictions do, you Yeah. Know? And, um, and it was, I was yeah. when I quit for good. I had I went to bed for four days and I cried for four days and I ached and I hurt and I cried and I didn't sleep for four days. It was if you don't count the Whipple surgery, mm -hmm. it's the hardest thing I ever did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had nothing harder except recovering from Whipple. <laughs> On the other hand, I found it was easier than I thought it was going to be. Well, maybe you, some people smoke who aren't addicted. I had a friend for years. We would a couple times a week go out for a drink together after work. And on our way to a bar, she would buy a pack of cigarettes and she would smoke at the bar. And then she'd leave them there when she left. She only smoked when she had a drink. Well, I'll tell you something. Of course, you remember Abby Hoffman, who was a clinical psychologist. Mm -hmm. And uh, in interviewing him once back in San Francisco, um, we started talking about addiction. And we were talking about smoking. And I said, I quit, and it was pretty easy for me. I mean, I did uh, some Bantron, I think, which was a, a nicotine substitute for just a couple of days. And then I just never smoked again. I said, on the other hand, I know other people who try to quit. And they've tried any number of times, and they can't quit. I said, what's the difference between them and me? And he said, there's a difference between addiction and habituation. <clears throat> and you mm -hmm. were habituated. No, that's not, a, yeah. I mean, that's well known. Yeah, You're, you were habituated, and she was addicted. Okay? And, and that made sense to me. It absolutely made sense to me. Uh, and I think I was always habituated to smoking, but never addicted to it. I think I've been habituated to a couple of things in my lifetime, but never addicted. I remember when I was doing cocaine, okay? Uh, I really was habituated and not addicted because when I quit, there were no withdrawal symptoms, you know, and I, I quit and I quit for good. And that was it. But my father was the same way. My father, remember, he used to drink. He was a musician. He was out playing with bands. A guy would come along and say, buy the band a drink, and they would, by the end of the night, they'd be snockered, right? My father one day found that he, he could hold his liquor, but he found the day came when he couldn't any longer, and he just said, I quit, and he just stopped. But he wasn't addicted. He had a drink now. R right, but he was quite a drinker while he was a drinker, you know? That's not the same as being addicted. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I think, and I think that we we uh, not enough times do we we always try and treat things like they're an addiction. I mean, I think that uh, I think Alcoholics Anonymous is a wonderful organization, but it doesn't necessarily solve every problem because everybody's different, and everybody has to approach it differently. And uh, yeah, anyway, my father just quit. I was amazed. I I had to, and he, he smoked, and he did one day he just said, "I don't want to smoke anymore." He quit smoking. You know, my mother always thought she smoked, but she didn't. She would always puff on the cigarette, but she'd never inhale it. And she'd go, "I got to quit these things." And I'm going, "Mom, all you got to do is put it down. You're not, you're not inhaling it." <laughs> yeah. So. What was cool about your dad mm -hmm. is that was everything. Yeah. Was when there were people at the house. Mm -hmm. And he was making drinks, serving drinks, and all of that stuff. Nobody ever noticed that he didn't drink. Yeah. And he made a point of that, of, of behaving in such a way that nobody noticed. Yeah, yeah. And it was amazing that he quit drinking and could still make drinks for other people. But he wasn't addicted, so it didn't matter. Do you remember drinking in those days? Because what I remember about my parents is, they would come home from, my mother would come home from work, and my father would come home from, he was in real estate at that time from work. And he would just, they would all, they would have a drink when they came home. It was just, you know. People a, do that all the time. They a, still do. <laughs> I don't know. Do people still do that? Yes. Or do they light up a joint? No. No? People still come I mean, certainly some people do. But, um. But people still do that. They come home from work and make a drink. You know what? I've never been able to figure out. Just because you don't do things, Alex, yeah. you you really can't think that the rest of the world behaves the same way. Well, no, but I, it, it's kind of interesting, but I find it difficult to understand why I have never, ever liked alcohol. Never. I mean, you know, or an occasional drink now and then. You know, no. I don't, I don't like eggplant. Yeah. I don't really care to know why. <laughs> no. I, th I think because in a proper, decent world, everyone would hate eggplant. <laughs> you know? See, I'm sorry I do because there's such wonderful ways of cooking it. Really? So I'm kind of sorry, but I can't, I can't, I don't like the taste, but I also can't stand the smell of it cooking. So. <laughs> I don't know. I'm mostly, I can eat almost anything yeah. except eggplant. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I just, uh, I've, I've never been, I, you know, I've never been, I don't think I've ever been addictive, an addictive personality at all. Uh, even though I've had, pro, pro, you know, been doing stuff for a long, a while, you know, smoking cigarettes, so on. Sm cigarettes were the hardest ones to quit because y y you, you are, um, it's almost, more pervasive and horrible than almost any other kind of addiction. I, you know, I think it's even worse probably than alcoholism to, to kick. Um, scientists, couple of scientists I used to know mm -hmm. have told me, and I've seen it in articles. Mm -hmm. I don't know the provenance of the articles, um, that cigarettes are a stronger addiction by by magnitudes than heroin. Wow. That make it harder to quit than heroin. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, I don't well. know anything about heroin, so I can't tell you. Yeah, well, I remember you were quite a smoker. You, you, we were both. I you, miss, you, to this really? day, there are times I'm sitting here typing away, you know, and, oh, I need to think. I would like well, to have well, a cigarette. I'll, 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 I'll make you feel <laughs> real guilty, you know. You're the one who started me smoking. You always tell me that, you know, yeah. I, as though you're not an independent human being. I well, I <laughs> well, I mean, I was wanted to impress my my girlfriend, you know. And you were smoking, and you were smoking. I think at that time Newports, so I started smoking Newports. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you did, and I started smoking Newports, and I was really into it. I not only had the Newports, but I got myself a Newport lighter. You know, so I so I matched with the whole thing, and that's how I started. Was you uh, you saying here you want to try? Sorry something? about that. Well, you know, if I if I was dying of lung cancer right now, I'd blame it on you. By the way, just quickly, what do you think about Rush Limbaugh having lung cancer, stage well, four? It's, 
for a lot of people who smoke, that happens. Yep, he did smoke for a long time, and then he quit and went to cigars, which is not much better. Quitting doesn't change the damage. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get I get such a visual response from people. Oh, good. I hope he dies slowly. You know, they, they because they they mix the persona of the radio guy with the, the actual guy, and I always appreciated Rush Limbaugh as a talent. Okay, I didn't I, agree with his politics, but I I liked his. I appreciated his. I think he was very good at his job. Oh, I thought he was. I thought he was excellent. But that's you know me. Uh, you know, looking at another person in the business who does not what I do exactly, but well, that's me as a producer looking at somebody. Well, you producers are different. You're always nagging us anyway. So you know, you're, you're always... weren't us. Nothing good would happen to you guys on the air. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. No, actually, you're right. You're right. Because I had a producer, uh, Albert Reynoso, my last producer, the one at Sirius XM, who was so good. He made me look great. You know, mm-hmm. he made me look great. Yeah. You know? uh, and, I had to do that with a number of television hosts who weren't <laughs> capable. Yeah, we won't <laughs> say who. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, are you going to watch the State of the Union address tonight? Well, Today is well, Tuesday. Well, well this will probably, I'm not doing a show on Tuesday, so this will probably run on Wednesday. So I really... I thought he was an asshole last night when he did the State of the Union address. And I think oh, I, stop it. I can safely this, say that. This is Tuesday. He's yeah. doing it tonight mm-hmm. after we've recorded this. Yes, right. So I'm I'm acting like what I think I will say anyway. Yeah. And then there were the, what do they call them, caucuses in Iowa yeah. Monday. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Well, that... I, what a cluster! What a cluster! Anywhere, what a cluster! Fuck that was. <laughs> um, I, um, uh, you know, I went to the Iowa caucuses a few years back, and I was impressed by them. Oddly enough, because it, it's really homespun politics. You know, people get into a room and they convince each other that they should go with their candidate, and it it's really a wonderful process. Uh, and I'm sorry to see it have, have fall, uh, to have fallen into such disrespect uh, because of this uh, error of judgment and using apps and things like that. Don't you think yeah. that something like it's no more than 14 hours since it was going last night, uh, that it's a little soon to talk about respect or not disrepute or not well they're already talking about we got to get rid of it we got to get rid of the caucuses. well some are others yeah. aren't you know i think the caucuses as i said i what i saw was a great american process that i really i really was awed by when i saw it going on because it was really grassroots politics it was like you well, go anybody out. can see it on television yeah and um you know i don't really care but to be the there and, to, and, me. and to get that feeling that these people are in this room doing a process which actually their vote counts, you know? I mean, they're It doesn't actually, count for anything. It doesn't get anybody elected. Well, it, it, it counts in that you're there. That You know, they don't just do this for the presidential elections. They also do this for, like, state elections and as about well. about one half of 1% of the people of the state participate. Well, and that's the problem with the rest of them, you know. But anyway, I just yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in. Hey, you know we've uh, we've kind of run out of time here. We've actually run more than out of time. What? Yeah, we've done uh, twenty eight minutes already. You ready for that? See how time flies when you're having fun with it. I wrote about this this week. Yeah. That there's not like I every Saturday I count out pills into the two little boxes, you yeah. know, that so I'll have them for the week, mm-hmm. and it takes about five minutes. Well, a little while back, you know, I, it, it's really boring, by the way. Oh. It is really boring. I do a whole month. I do a whole month. Well, I'm telling my story right now. Yeah. And um, and so I, a couple of Saturdays ago, you know, I stood there in the kitchen going through them all, putting them in the right little boxes. And I expected it, as usual, to be about five minutes. And I looked at the clock when I was done, and 15 minutes or more had gone by. What did I do? Blackout? And if so, why was I still vertical? I mean, it was, it made no sense. 
And then I've identified some other things that take terribly much longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't understand how being old slows you down counting out pills, but apparently it does. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're appealing to an, a crowd uh, that, uh, well, that is not in what we would call the prime demographic. Uh, um, she's talking about sorting her pills, and I'm arguing with her, you only do a week, I do a month at a time, you know. And uh, I, 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 you know, I just, uh, uh, it's all it's getting old stuff, you know. You know, tomorrow I have another one of my radiation treatments. You know, it's, it's fun. It's, you know, it, the worst thing about the radiation treatments, they're boring. Most of that kind of stuff is the people who conduct the tests are actually doing something, so oh, they're yeah. not bored, you yeah, know? right. But you're just, whenever I have a CT scan or they take blood out of my arm or something, I'm just sitting there while they do their thing. And if it doesn't get over quickly, you're right. It's really boring. Well, we, we, we're really running over, but let's. who gives a shit? Uh, what happens is I've got this machine that's going around me every now and yes. then, and then it stops. And then it's yes. around me some more, and then it stops. Yes. This went on the first time for about 45 minutes, okay? And mm. then the guy says, all right, we're ready to zap you. Uh, it'll take two minutes. And the thing went, meep, meep. Okay, you're through. And I'm going, what was the rest of the time for? He said, setting it up. <laughs> you know? Oh, it man. Really, I mean, we shouldn't complain. They're miraculous things. Oh, oh, listen, this, this uh, radiation treatments used to take uh, two months <clears throat> of going five days a week. And this, <clears throat> zap, zap, zap. And the only side effects I've had, I'm a little tired and... Uh, I, uh, I, do they tell you that it's from that, or uh, you yeah, no, they, no, not sleep no, last no, night? No, no, they say that, that you can have mild fatigue, uh -huh. and and urinary problems, which I have. I have to, you know. I really I, don't think we want to discuss those. Well, yeah, no, we don't have to, but you know, but uh, uh, because they're going after uh, anyway. It it uh, I can't I can't even believe it works. Because I don't feel anything. You know, you get a shot, you go, hey, I'm going to get better. I've got some something in me. This, you don't feel a thing. Nothing. Zero. Oh, Zilch. that's cool. Yeah, of course it's cool. It's science fiction. And then he's going to go put the prostate seeds in me after that. And uh, after maybe about uh, a week and a half, the three and a half weeks of one thing and another, I'm good to go. That's it. Problem, That's great. Problem solved, you know, and hopefully it won't come back. So, yes. Whatever. Anyway, hey, listen, what? You, you look like you're. Oh, how season. often do they check you after that's all done? Uh, that I have no idea. I would imagine probably every three months or so. Okay. They probably check my PSA to see how it's doing and, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, it should, should, in most cases, they say that uh, both being used at the, I'm doing two different courses of things and they say that once you do those uh, your chances are very good that it's about 92 Don't to die of something else I, no I think he said <laughs> yeah he says 92 to 93 percent chance it will not come back you know that it's to be gone so anyway but whatever I said see see what we and talk about hurt and it doesn't leave a scar no scar cool. nothing you know not even uh, it's not even laparoscopic and the other one, I won't tell you how they put the seeds in, but I can uh, guess. But they don't cut. No, they don't go up your butt. They really don't. They they stick a needle in your perineum. Mm, and, I know and, that's and, and, and then they put the seeds in there, and you know you're out for that. So, what the hell? I don't care. Put me out. When does that happen? That'll happen on the 25th of August that I'm going in for that. August. Procedure. August of uh, of February. Oh, okay. This yeah. month. All yeah. right. Yeah. On a Sunday, they're doing it. No, no, no. 25th is a... Um... 25th. You said 23rd, I think. No, 25th. Right, sir. 25th. So, All right. you know, it's a Tuesday, and uh, it's an in-and-out procedure. It's, well, you know, you don't stay in the hospital or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And supposedly, according to... I looked at what my doctor writes on his thing, and he says, you can uh, resume your normal activities, even play golf. 
funny. We, well, we know what's important to him. <laughs> yeah, I want to know why why golf. You know, you can get back. Well, it's the same. I for me, it's the same thing as when news people use sports analogies when they're talking anything else but sports. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. You know? You, you know what they're going to have to give me? This is funny. What they're going to have to give me after I've had the seeds put in me is a little card saying I've been radiated, that I have seeds in me. So if I want to go take a plane trip, you know, if something goes off because of the radiation, I just show them the card and they understand. Oh, you're liable to set off the metal detectors. Or, or something. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so they... Well there must be lots of men who do that. They, they must be used oh, to Oh, it. yeah, no, they, they, from what I've read, when I read this thing, it said that every every uh, every guy at an airport knows about this. Yeah. Yes. So, like people yeah. with a knee yeah. a or hip or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, right. Oh, you know, I haven't been on an airplane since I had this, where it's somewhere up here, um, this port installed where they put, fluids in and take out blood and stuff like yes, that. That's your your USB port. And I'm yes, it is kinda of is, yes. And uh I think I haven't been on an airplane since then, but I think that it's yeah it's plastic, but I think it's got metal in it. It might set off yeah. a yeah. a indicator. Well you know? we should both get on an airplane together. We'd really set off a nice musical <laughs> rendition. Hey look, we gotta go. This is we've gone uh, thirty five minutes. Wow. Well, not a record for us. I think 40 was our record. Well, ladies that's and gentlemen, that's a little bit out of sync today, but nevertheless, always in sync mentally. <laughs> Trying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate it. Thank you. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, 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 and that's Ronnie, and this is Alex, and uh, here we are. We are here tonight, and uh, I'm going to turn on the Skype lines. I understand Phil is not going to be here tonight, so it's safe for all the rest of you to call. By the way, I said she was out of sync, and as I was watching it when we were recording it, she was out of sync, but then I watched the recording, and she was in sync, so go figure that one out, okay? Anyway. Hi, how are you? Uh, I may have to run off to the bathroom tonight on any number of occasions. I don't know. In which case, I'll let you talk with each other for a few moments. The reason being that, um, uh, you know, I'm a, I just did my third day of radiation today. And um, the effects of it were a little bit worse than it's been before. I mean, in that... Uh, having to pee and so on and so on. Oops! Oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, wow, oh, wow. Here comes Scott Boddicker. He always, he, he, he always comes on the program when it's, when the, uh, the, uh, uh, when it's, what, we, what, what can we call it, Scott, when it's clear uh, to, um, uh, I, I was actually calling in hoping he'd be on. Oh, really? Oh, okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I just... I just uh, put on Scott Boddicker and it, it uh, went to something else. Now, go. There we go. There's that. And I, Charlie Wallace. I just Wallace. wanted to hear how he spun all that stuff. Uh, I just wanted to hear. I got an email from, uh, not an email, but a, uh, yeah. a, a message from him. Uh, Hi, Charlie. How are you? Uh, I got a message from him That's saying Scott. he wasn't going to be on tonight. And then he wrote, I thought last night's speech by Trump was incredible. And I'll tell you what happened. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what happened with me and that speech. Uh, I, it was on, and I went, "Oh, the State of the Union is on. I guess I'll tune in. I'll go over to it." So I went over to it, and there he was blathering about um, health, uh, yeah. you know, plans. And I heard him for about f about ten seconds, and then I turned it off. I just couldn't stand it. And then I turned it back on later, and he was doing something else, and it, I lasted about 10 seconds that time before I just 
turned it off. I said, I don't need this. I don't need to listen to this moron. I'm an intelligent human being, and I don't need my intelligence compromised, you know? Uh, and um, uh, plus, he's a fucking asshole, you know? And uh, uh, I heard by, after the fact some of the things that I'll tell you the thing I loved. Uh, to begin with, I loved what Nancy Pelosi did. I just thought, you know, and of course the Republicans are going, oh, that's horrible what she did. That's terrible. <laughs> but the motherfucker. That's disrespectful. I can't believe it. Yeah, well, what about Nancy Pelosi putting her hand out to shake his hand and him not responding to it? Yeah. You know, so her tearing up his speech, I think, was entirely appropriate. And and um, the man has no, cl the, you know, the man, the man has no class about him. From what I could see of the speech, he wasn't giving a speech about the state of the nation. He was giving a speech about how good he is. Okay, and that was the entire just, uh, you know, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm I'm getting over radiation today, and I, it makes me a little. Uh, I get radiation brain. Um, yeah. Trump's but, all about Trump. Yeah, it was all about Trump. And I'm going, you know, come on. Uh, aren't we going to talk about, uh, you know, the state of the nation? No. Well, apparently we're not going to. He's going to do everything he can to put down all the people that he possibly can. And uh, his, uh, his normal uh, life of trying to spend his life uh, let's see. Let's get Rob Alfano in here. Uh, uh, spending his life trying to one up Trump, you know. Uh, I mean, it was amazingly bad. Hi there, Rob. Hey. Got your microphone working? Oh, got to take it off mute. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got, you kind of got your studio going again. Um, not really. I just have the mic working. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm getting a new console. I'm going to completely rebuild this thing. And then you can do more voicers for me? Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm buying a new board. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm buying a professional radio console. Are you really? Yeah. Why? <laughs> because it's way less complex than this board here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it only ha it's small. It's eight channels and... It doesn't have an audition channel. It's just program, um, but mm -hmm. it's built like a brick shit house, and it's going to do everything. It's going to be more versatile than this board will be. Oh really? Oh yeah. okay. All right. Cool. It's not crazy expensive. It's a thousand dollars. Oh really? Yeah. Let me let me know what it is for crying out loud. Maybe I'll yeah. get one. You know. Yeah. yeah. Rob didn't have one. I want one. You press the you press the mic button, the speakers mute. Oh, 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 I want one of those. You know, it's one of it's a it's a real deal radio board, but it's small. Yeah. Well, I the thing that makes me happy is I want to be able to use your voice again for stuff, you know. Yeah, and I also want to get cuz I'm thinking about what I'm going to do when I retire. Mhm. Mm and originally when I built this studio, my plan was to try to do voiceovers. Mhm. Mm but uh, I kind of got sidetracked. I lost interest. But now that's the one thing I could do retired mm -hmm. and see if I can make a little bit of yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, well, just as long as you don't charge me for it, I'll. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, before we get back into the whole thing about Trump and, and uh, last night's uh, debacle, um, uh, let me just say that on, what was it? Saturday, I decided. I want to really try and go for a thousand subscribers, so I get some of the benefits of a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So I put a thing on my Facebook page, and within something like eight hours, I had the thousand. Wow! And I now have a thousand twenty-five, and I got a thing from uh, from YouTube saying, "Congratulations, you've hit a thousand. You can now become a." Um, monetize? Uh, no, we, well, I can monetize it, but it's part of being part of their. Uh, being a YouTube partner, uh, and You're a YouTube core, yeah, yeah. So I'm a YouTube partner, and they said it should take a month before we'll give you the okay on that. And it took them one day, and I got a thing saying, "Congratulations, you're a YouTube partner, and now you can monetize it." 
So I might run a commercial before the show and after the show, and I but I don't think it's going to make me any money because I don't have that many people watching. You know, who, you, who would you run the commercial for? Oh, uh, they would probably run them. Draw. Oh, 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 I see. I and then I would get paid might. for them being run. See? Right. I. See. You know. Well, it, they do that on the uh, on the website too, right? Uh, they do that on the. Yeah, because. Uh, what do you uh, on tune your in. web on the Gabnet page when you go to uh, tune in. Start like uh, when you go to tune in. When you go to tune in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They they. You start Jack's show on that thing. They they do a. Tight yeah, yeah. you don't. You can get ABS. around that by just listening to Jack's show off the on demand, where we don't run any commercials or anything. Right. On my but, Mac, uh, I have a plugin that I don't have to watch any commercials. Really? Yeah, I don't. I get a little thing every time I click on a because I watch it. I have a ton of YouTube channels that I watch, and every time I start a video, I get a little thing in the lower right hand corner. It's a skip ad. Mm -hmm. I click that, go right to the, I don't have to watch any ads. Never. Yeah. So anyway, so, so, so we're, we're, we're. It mean they don't get paid on yeah. them. Well, I want to watch them. Yeah. I want to thank everybody who signed up. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, it, I was at something like 850 and I put this thing up and within about eight hours or nine hours, all of a sudden I hit a thousand people really responded to it. And, uh, uh, so now we have over a thousand people subscribing to this YouTube channel and thank you all for those of you who did it. And for those of you who didn't, well, you know, so what, you know, uh, it's okay by me. Uh, anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about. We don't have Phil here tonight, so we can talk about it without getting interrupted by, uh, you know, I consider anybody who is for Trump to be intellectually deficient. Okay? Uh, would anybody disagree with that statement? Okay. But you, I do. You do? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I found this really cool little community cigar bar. Not a cigar bar, a cigar shop where they have some nice, comfy leather chairs. Yeah, yeah. You can sit there, you yeah. buy a cigar, you smoke it, and you hang out. Well, I met some guys last week who like Trump, but when you have this, not like Phil in the way they are with Trump, mm -hmm. they see his faults. They, I mean, they made some very intelligent arguments about Planned Parenthood and what the Republicans want to do. And they're saying, look, in my family, I don't believe in uh you know abortion but come on a woman has the right to choose these are trump people yeah and i i mean i was just sitting there amazed by the discussion with these people who said i like a lot of what trump is doing but i disagree with and they just went on and on and on and uh, so there I, are people uh, like that there are yes. people like that well you know i my, my problem with with that thinking is that we have to remember that the president of the United States is the representative of our country to the entire world, mm -hmm. and that he needs to have a certain kind of respect for everyone else that doesn't generate ill will for the United States of America. And he has generated nothing but a mess of ill will around... The, I mean, I don't want... I'm afraid to go to Europe just for the, how they'll look at me for being an American. Yes, Kevin. So what we want is people like the people that we're talking to Rob to be president and not Donald Trump. Well, you see, I can see somebody being a conservative. I'm not saying that's intellectually deficient. I mean, Patrick is a conservative, but he doesn't right. like Trump. Right. You know, because quite frankly, I think if you're a conservative, really Trump doesn't engender uh, uh, conservative values. No, look yeah. at the debt. Uh, look at a lot of things. Look at his morality. Look at, the look at yeah, his morality. Look at the national debt. I mean, this guy couldn't get the uh, how many marriages right? Uh, right. <laughs> uh, is it, is, how, how many times he's has he been married? Third. He's on his third. He's on his third. And he's not doing too well with this one. She, she, she looks happy to me. She she's looks, under contract. She looks uh, yeah. she looks like she's blinking her eyes in Morse code saying, get me out of here. 
You know, I mean, yeah, did look, you see her put that uh, medal on on Limbaugh last night? It was like she was being tortured from afar. And to be fair, though, Jackie O was sort of under contract. Yeah, but let me ask you a question. I didn't see it. Was Limbaugh there? Yes. Yeah, I, w I was yeah. eating dinner when they put that medal on him, and it almost launched. Wait, I, wait, wait. Why did you they know, do that? I wanted to get into that tonight because. Yeah. First of all, let me say that I feel sorry for Rush Limbaugh. And and That's fine. and I feel sorry for him because I have always respected him as a broadcaster. In other words, as one person who does what I do, watching somebody else do what I do and seeing him do it with a certain amount of virtuosity. I don't like what the message he has to put across. Does that make sense? It does, but I disagree in that I think he's irresponsible. Um, he's spreading the gospel according to Rush in a way that makes it seem like it's news and people buy into bullshit. It's sort of like what Stephen Colbert used to do when he did the Colbert okay, Report. Right? But that, that's not what I'm attending to, though, uh, here. Uh, what I'm saying, What I'm saying is that as a talent, looking at another talent, I say, this guy's really good at what he does. Now, I don't agree with the message. I don't agree with how he's using that talent. But I do say that he, he when I, I remember years ago, listening to Rush because I was traveling between Sacramento and San Francisco, and Rush was on, and I would listen to Rush. And I went, I don't agree with the goddamn thing this guy says, but boy, he does it well, you know? And, and I was looking at him as one talent looking at another. Now, I can sit here and tell you, for instance, that uh, who was the guy that just died? Um, Imus. Uh, Don Imus uh, was yeah. a piece of shit. He wasn't very good at all what he did, oh, okay. you know? And well, Howard, who I have over the years had a certain shall we say, interesting relationship with, um, in spite of all the times that he's put me down and said I stole from him and everything else, uh, I still think Howard Stern's a pretty damn good talent. I mean, when I've listened to him, I said, this guy is good at what he does. So, you know, there's a difference between going along with the message, and I don't admire Rush Limbaugh for his message or for what he had maybe has done for this country by espousing that message, but I'm talking about his ability. And let me just say there's one other factor here that comes into play. Most of us who do talk shows are, in fact, playing a character. Uh, I try not to, but even I have a certain character I I, I portray, you know what I'm talking about, Rob, you know? I do, but and, I think and, he, and I, I just like that he, I, I don't like how he comports that character and tries well, to talk, tell people uh, uh, bullshit and they believe it. Well, and I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what like, happened in the days that I used and, to listen to him. He was very self-pejorative about himself. Who? Rush. He would talk about his nicotine-stained fingers, and uh, he would always say negative things about himself. He would always kid about himself. And it, in later years when I heard him, he became more serious. It was like he suddenly felt he had more of a mission than he had in the beginning when all he cared about was purely entertaining an audience with some kind of right-wing character. Does all this make sense to you people? You know, because I'm I'm talking to Rob, who knows what I'm probably talking about here. I, I do. I just can't respond. See, I can respect Don Imus because Don Imus, when he talked to lawmakers, when he talked to people, he didn't spout out a bunch of bullshit like a bunch yes, of. Yes, but he was anti-Semitic and he was racist. I will agree with that. Yeah. But at least if you know that, then they move on from it. With with Rush, he's portraying himself and uh, he's portraying his message as the truth. So same thing with Sean Hannity. They come out of the same freaking school. And to me, that's dangerous to our society. When you start to confuse politics mm -hmm. and 
news with being a character, and you have people with IQs that, you know, around the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. who buy into that crap, it's dangerous because it's fake. That is fake news to well, me. And then he's, the he's the scourge. And I see. I, I would, I would, if, if you were to I'm argue sorry. that, a, if you were to I'm argue that, okay, I would go along with you. I would go along with you more if we were talking about Sean Hannity. They're the same example. to me. Well, I don't think they are the same. I o often felt that that uh, that uh, Rush was playing what he believed to be a character. But as years went on, and, you know, as with so many people I know, you know, a lot of comedians I've known play a character on stage, and after a while, they in real life become that character. You get what I'm saying? They start mm -hmm. believing that character, and I think that's what happened to Rush in later years. But I, uh, that being said, that I feel sorry for him, and I, I, I admire his... Uh, his virtuosity, but I don't admire his politics or the message he espoused. Uh, I do think giving him the Medal of Honor denigrates all the people who have ever won that Medal of Honor. It <laughs> exactly. suddenly, we may as well say, why don't we start giving away Medals of Honor in bubblegum machines, you know, plus, uh, or in claw machines that go down and try and get the Medal of Honor, you know. Because what we've done is we, by, by him doing that, we have cheapened it, you know. And well, plus, plus it, just, it just reinforces everything that he says. Yeah. Everything that the, the president has said, and then he backs it up, and then everything that, you know, he says that the president's saying, oh, well, if you just keep following me, you'll get a medal too. Yeah, yeah. So let me just put yeah, Tony in. Uh, he grades it. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say? Maybe Hannity. Maybe Hannity will get one too next. Well, what I'm saying is, is that this really cheapened the value of the Medal of Freedom. Yeah. It means that exactly. you've done something heroic for your country. Basically, it's usually given for heroism. Usually, yeah. sometimes you do give it for somebody who's had major accomplishment, and um, uh, that accomplishment may be in the sciences or something like that. But you don't give it to some fucking entertainer, exactly. you know. What's he going to do? That, give whole, it that whole State of the Union was a reality show last night. Uh, uh, obviously, it was a reality show last night, <laughs> you know. But I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I have to be honest with you. It just, it just, what I saw of it so bothered me <laughs> that I, that I just, you know, I couldn't go along I, with it. I know? recorded it mm -hmm. and. I had the sound down because it was my daughter's birthday, but I had the sound down, and I recorded it. I said, oh, I'll watch it later, and I have yet to watch it. I just I watched the snippets. Bad. Yeah. I watched the snippets, and that's all I need to see. Yeah, but I'm, the respect. And then uh, I saw the, 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 the ripping up of the thing at the end, and I, I don't know whether I liked that or not, but, you know, I thought it was nice. But I think, another... I think he deserved it because of what he did to her at the beginning. When she, yeah, when she went to yeah. shake his hand like you do because he's the president and so on, and he wouldn't shake her hand. That, that, was, that was his opening salvo, and her ending salvo was tearing up that speech. Now, here's the thing. Here's what really got me. Pence, who we yes. all know is such a fucking toady. I mean, geez <laughs> almighty. What a... Oh, he had me. He more must pissed. give one great blowjob for Christ's sake, you know. <laughs> um, we just lost uh, Tony again. I don't know what his problem is tonight. Um, uh, 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 Pence said about the tearing up of the of the thing. Did you hear what he said? He said he said, and and this is his absolute. I'm quoting him, uh, exactly what he said. He said. It was like she was tearing up the Constitution. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly the same. So was everybody the, on the Fox. The and it was like, they just blew it all out of the court. Yeah. Tearing up the Constitution. Rip, rip. And what? But what? The, his, yeah. his speech was the Constitution? Give me a yeah. fucking break, you fucking moron, asshole, motherfucker, cocksucker. Trump wipes his ass with the Constitution. Yeah. 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 
I mean, that's what I would have done. I would have pulled my trous trousers down and wiped my ass with his speech. <laughs> and I got, let's for a moment say, for just a moment, what a brave, decent person Romney turned out to be. Wow. Yep. That was a good speech. Yeah. It was. Uh, you know, that his morality would not allow him to vote to not find him guilty, you know? And he was, the he was the only Republican that did. Wait a minute. Kathleen is trying to call the show. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, what, wait a minute. We're, we're doing the show right now. Why aren't you calling into it? Going down with my dad, so. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, I know I probably won't be on the show for a couple weeks. Well, I, uh, why don't I call you when the show's over with tonight, okay? Well, you know what? Call me tomorrow. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, honey? All right, I'll okay. talk to you later. Uh, okay, boy. Bye. Oh, boy. Hmm. All I don't know. If she had to know I was on the air at this time, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, boy. Jeez. Doesn't sound good. And that mm -hmm. does, doesn't, doesn't sound good at all. Doesn't sound good at all. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know. Well, her her mother died a couple of months, about a month ago, maybe. Maybe a little longer than that, yeah. two months ago. And it's not yeah. uncommon for a lifelong mate, you know, to go yeah. at, right after that. It's like... You know, they they die out of loneliness in a way. Strange. Oh, don't say that. No, your mother isn't going yeah. anywhere. She's not going anywhere. You don't want to get out. She she want she wants you're to there, keep me. You're there, Tony. You're there for her. You don't want to get. You <laughs> got to make it to your sixty-six. Well, you know what? My mother lived what forty years after my after my tonight. father died. Wow. Lived for forty I years think... after my father died. And my attitude was, um, uh, how much did she really love my father? <laughs> you know, I mean, she didn't want to go. You know, I went, oh, maybe, maybe she just didn't, uh, she wasn't, uh, you know. So Obviously anyway. Obviously, she didn't remarry, did she? No. No, she never remarried. No. Uh -uh. And, she must have loved her. Yeah. I, I imagine she did, but I never heard her pining about him. And I'll tell you something. Later on in life, like when, when she was like about 90 and we were talking about him, she started talking trash about him. Oh, that, oh, oh really? And that pissed me off because I loved my father and didn't like her as much. Okay? <laughs> you know, and how dare you put down my dad? Hi, Jeff. Um, hey, guys. How you doing? So, you know, I mean, uh, but I feel so sorry for her. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, that's I, you know, I, I, I think the world of Kathleen. She's been a friend for years and years and years now. And, um, well, what the, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and call her later anyway. So anyway, um, where were we? Oh, so we, we, were talking about, we were talking about Limbaugh dying. And he's dead. Let's face it. How long, how long do you think he got, Alex? Well, my aunt had that, and she didn't last long. I'd say it's stage expected. four uh, 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 lung cancer. They'll potchke around with him for the next year or so. They'll remove nodes from his lungs and things like that. And eventually he's going to die. You know, I mean, I, of this. I wouldn't let them touch me. Hmm? I wouldn't let them touch me if I got that diagnosis. Well, you know, what, it, it depends. What are you doing? Why go through that? Well, my question is, why am I going through what I'm going through? Well, you're not. That's not a death sentence. What you have, no, I would. Do no, the, no. Uh, but if you're if you're told you've got stage four cancer, you're going to let them dig and pull out for yeah, what? I'm letting them. Just, I'm, I don't know. I'm letting them term. You know, radiate me. Yeah, I, you're going to live twenty same. years. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Live. That's not going to kill you. You know that. Yeah. Giuliano has prostate cancer back in the early two thousands, didn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and you know Around who? And you know who? His, you know who his doctor was? Your doctor. My you doctor. Said, yeah. 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 So you know, but my doctor, um, he um, he loves doing the seeds because I called him and I said uh, I saw him today. He came in after the procedure, and he said I said so. Uh, 
um, um, the, the, how's the radiation going? And he said, yeah, it's going great. I said, so is this going to do away with any of it? And he says, uh, we don't know. He says, we don't know how, how, how successful this particular thing is. And I'm going, then why the fuck is he even doing it? <laughs> you know? And he said, but so the seeds will take care of it. You know, so he's Dr. Seed, you know, and uh, um, I, I'm getting the seeds on the 25th, on the 25th. And he says, that one will give you a little more grief than you're getting now. But today I was feeling kind of shitty when I, I came home, I slept for two hours, you know, and uh, I've never had, never had any of the radiation before uh, affect me like that. So, you know, but anyway, I'm, you know. Here I am, and I still don't have to pee yet. We're almost through with the show. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I've been pooping and doing all kinds of things that I don't normally do. Well, I poop, but I don't poop like this. Uh, anyway, it's, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing okay, I guess, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I just feel, I feel bad for him. Uh, I don't, everybody I talk to, says, oh, good, I hope it's slow. Really, that's the reaction people have about him having Alex, cancer. Alex, they're, they're just saying they want him to live a long time. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Continuous, continuous torture. Right? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, I just don't understand why... Uh, you know, I can't. I can't have that kind of. I I can't have that kind of feeling because I have cancer. Okay, so I I uh, I certainly don't want him to die from it. Although if it were Sean Hannity, I might not be so forgiving. Uh, That's where Sean learned it, though. Hmm? What? That's where Sean learned it. That's where Sean realized you can make money. He's the he's the host, if you will. Well, I no, mean, he, uh, like uh, you know. Okay. He's, okay. He's a, uh, patient number one. Can I give you an example that mm. may clear this up for you, Rob? Mm. There was an actor, very fine black actor, by the name of Stepan Fetchit, who what? created a character of a black man who was going, if feet don't fail me now, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, he invented that character, and he didn't create a stereotype. He created a character. Then along comes Mantan Morlin and Willie Best and all these other black guys in the movies who are doing the same act, and all of a sudden it becomes a stereotype. Same thing's true with Rush. If Rush were the only guy in the business doing what he does and there weren't other imitators, then you wouldn't blame Rush as much. You get what I'm saying? Alex Jones. Alex Jones is, is simply a, a, a Rush wannabe. Hannity yeah. is a Rush wannabe. Uh, all these talk show hosts in the country are Rush wannabes because he was the guy that, what he did is he, where he was smart is it used to be, and you remember this too probably, Rob, if you've been in the business long enough, a thing called the um, uh, equal time provision. Yeah. In which if you had an oppose, uh, a, a viewpoint, you had to invite an opposing viewpoint to be mm -hmm. on your program to give it balance. Right. Well, at a certain point, they threw out that. And up until, uh, up until that time, Rush, when he was doing talk shows in Sacramento, was just, uh, you know, he was inviting people to come on with the other opinion. All right? Which is the way, yeah. that's what talk radio should be. Well, but, but when they, with this talk radio yeah. is dangerous. When they did away with the, with the equal time provision, yeah. Rush saw that as an opportunity to take a stance, to be a certain, you know, have a certain position and be able to do it without having to have anybody else on to say, to disagree with him. And he saw yeah. the value in that and he saw the opening there and he took it. Now, we can't blame him for that because that was a, that was a business decision. It was all the other people that came after him that then tried to imitate what he was doing that made it so toxic. You know, think so. Yeah, I think I so. Know. I don't know. I think Rush did enough damage all on his own. The yeah. other ones just capitalized because they realized it was a way to make money. It was, a, you know, that was the hook. That's what uh, the morning zoo guy. Who's the who's the other one that got thrown off Fox? 
Um, the other uh, conservative host, he had a nighttime show on Fox. He was a Z oh, Morning oh, Zoo host, and mean, then he went into not who? Riley, not a Riley, not Riley, the other one. Um, you know, who I'm talking about. No. Um, Another one of these clones who comes on with a strong personality and, you know, preaching fake crap and, you know, getting followers and getting more powerful. And it's one thing oh, if it's... That's the guy who's drawing a conspiracy Glenn, theory. Glenn oh, Beck. Oh, Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn Beck. Yeah. On the chalkboard, so, like a nut. See, when you bring politicians on and you talk to the president and you do stuff like that and, you're, and you've got a shtick... You're getting people to buy he, into. He was bullshit. so, but he was so fucked that even Fox didn't want him after a while. <laughs> you know, I mean, they just do a lot of damage. I'm sorry, I think it's wrong, it, and I'll never forgive any of them. And I could give a damn about Rush Limbaugh and his. And by the way, Beck did recant a lot of his beliefs later on. It, Who did Beck when he Who went into Beck? having yeah. his own setup and everything he, like that? He suddenly so. felt and and said, "I've done some bad things here." Mm. You know, mm. uh, but can I can I, yeah. can I ask you a question? Then? Yeah. Do you think? I mean, do you think then deep down, like now that he rush has like this terminal illness, you wonder then what is his real personality? Like when the light goes off, he closes the door, and you sat down. With him. Can you imagine he was a hundred and ninety? You think he's totally? I, I different? have no. I have no idea. I don't know anybody that knows Rush. Okay. I used. To uh, I, I was actually on his at his TV show once. He used to have it. Remember when he had that TV yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine was the technical director on that show. I'd been there a couple of times. Uh, you know, he was kind of a sleazeball from what I heard. Really? Like, for example, I heard he used to go to the Dominican Republic for for prostitute for girls and yeah. yeah. But yet he's Mr. Conservative, right? Well, he's not, you know, he doesn't be speak. I don't ever remember him really be speaking morality. Okay. No. No, I'm serious. I'm he's serious. He's like Trump, right? He's you not a super Christian. No. I mean, look, you got to you got to ask how all you know. Trump shows up at an evangelical uh, yeah. gr group, and they're all applauding him and welcome Donald Trump. Yeah. The guy, the welcome. We're glad that you fucked, uh, you g got divorced from two other wives, and yeah. that you cheated on them and fucked porn stars. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. We love you. As long what? as you write us a check. Yeah. Right. How do you? Yeah. How do you even even countenance that? That's why I like so much Romney, because Romney said. Hey, my religious belief will not allow me to let this guy get away with this. Right. You know? It's and I actually really believe I thought that was genuine, actually. He seemed genuine, Romney. Well, of course. To me. Uh, of I course he that was genuine. Impact. And, you know, I mean, uh, well, he, he I, basically I, I, said, I, 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 he says, I'm going to get, I'm going to get blowback from this. Yeah. You know, but I don't care. And, you know, he's, in a way, he's safe because in Utah, they don't like Trump. The Mormons do not like Trump. They find him an immoral human being that they really have no respect for. So he's kind of not putting himself on the, you know, on the on the burner on that one. Uh, Susan Collins, uh, I think, has sealed her doom with the, with this vote. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I I think people in her state are going to be uh, not too happy with what she did. Um, who is the other guy? The guy who's not even running again. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying Lamar to remember. Alexander, something uh, like that. Yeah, Lamar yeah. Alexander. Uh, he um, he could have taken a stance here, you know. Yeah. He could have. Uh, none of this would have taken them to the sixty-seven percent they no. they had, you know. Um, no. But uh, that they needed. No way. No way. Uh, even even if they had a, a very heavily it takes sixty-seven percent or something like that, and uh, yeah, two thirds. Two thirds, um, and as so, really, you're never going to get rid of a president. I'm sorry, it's never going to happen. He could be Hitler; well, you wouldn't be able not. to get rid of him. You know, that's true. Yeah. Um, but if if Nixon were alive today, he'd go shit. Should resign. Well, <laughs> he they had him so nailed that even the Republicans were going to go after him. You think, really? Yeah, yeah. They, they and it wasn't as divisive a Congress then as it is now. It was divisive. It's always been divisive, 
but not like today. I mean, it was just so... I, I stopped believing in America about halfway through the vote today. Okay? I stopped believing in America because I just don't think there's anything we can do about it. When they say, well, you're the American public and you can vote these guys out and blah, 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 blah. Nah. Nah. We, so we, we don't have any power over this. Okay? You can just put another stooge in there. Put another stooge in there. And it, you got to get this one out because today he wrote some tweet that pretty much indicated that even if he was not reelected, he wouldn't leave. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, I, 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 I mean, it, he, it was it was his Fifth Avenue moment. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Look. yeah. Um, so, uh, to remind him that Senator that's Pro- not being shoot somebody does. in Fifth Avenue and get away with it. Senator Pro- yep. just prove that. Yeah, I can jump in Nevada shit and come smelling like a roses. Well, he's going to feel more empowered by this, but he shouldn't feel empowered because uh, I, 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 it's going to be interesting to see what happens to these senators, you know, when they yep. go running for re-election. I, uh, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see if people remember. Yeah, the ones who are up for re-election this year are in more trouble <laughs> than the ones two years from now because the American public's, you know, you know what it had me thinking. Of Republicans up this year. What would you say, Charlie? There's 20 Republicans up for re-election this year. Okay. I'll bet you that at least half of them don't get re-elected. Yep. Yeah. That would give us the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. So I was driving all day today, and I was driving back, listening to all this on the radio, mm-hmm. and I'm an independent, so I can't vote in the primary. Yeah. So I'm wondering if I can switch, become a Democrat, so I can vote in the primary— and then go back to be independent, so I can <laughs> so I can vote in the. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if you can you do that. Uh, uh, yes, you can. Be, yeah, yeah, because I, I'm trying to do it myself. <laughs> oh, okay. I know somebody's registered. Just because a... that way you can you can switch so you can vote in a primary and then go back. Well, you're so California. You can vote in general. Well, I know people that have have. have um, um, you can become Republicans and become yeah. Republicans just so they could fuck them up in the primaries. You know. Yeah. See, I, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's where I'm at right now. That's where I'm at right now. I, uh, the issue I'm is, to really are fuck you in up. a primary or not? Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to be in a Democrat primary, then then you can be choose any one of the yeah. any one of the yeah, Democrats. Yeah. They, they, they say you can available. switch over. But I didn't know if you could switch back before the well, general. Well, you could still vote. Oh, you, I think you can switch back on a. Uh, I think uh, it depends on how long. It only matters in the primary. Yeah, why would you it matter? You can vote however you want in the general. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter in the yeah. primary. You, you can be oh, yeah, independent. Okay. That's right. Yeah. A Democrat. Now, speaking of That's primaries, right. you know, we you had just this. Just get into the primary, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. We right. had this, uh, this uh, little clusterfuck that happened up in Iowa. Huh. They're still counting votes. Can you believe this? Yeah. <laughs> We're doomed. They're screwing Bernie. Right. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I, I've often said that I went to I went to the uh, to the caucuses in Iowa a few years back, and I saw them happening, and I was really kind of in awe of them, oddly enough, because I really felt it was a hands-on American process, you know, yes. more than voting, more than anything else. Here are a bunch oh. of people all getting together in a room and deciding among themselves who they were going to nominate, you know. And what happens is they get in a room and everybody lines up behind these people who are for these various nominees. Yep. And then uh, if you don't have 15%, that group, like let's say it's, let's just for the sake of argument, say it's Elizabeth Warren's group doesn't have 15%. Oh. <laughs> then you have to go find yourself another group to be with who was over 15%. So this is what we, when they talked about so they, second no. choices and so on, that's what said, that's about. And at the end of the night, you got one heck of a long line, and that person is first, you know, and then they send that result in to the state, and the state adds them up, and eventually you have a winner. Uh, this whole thing fell apart, not because the process didn't work, but because the app didn't work. That's right. You know, they tried to d- go digital with this whole thing, and it fucked the whole situation up. Yes, uh, Jeff? Well, I, I, I have a different attitude <laughs> of this whole Iowa thing. Mm-hmm. 
I think it's 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 inappropriate because this whole so many people who have jobs, they got wives, they got kids, they got to take care of. They don't have the time to fought around. I believe they changed. And if you that. look who was there, it was either old people or or college. Well, it's kids. not. It doesn't happen to begin with. It doesn't happen during the daytime. So it right. doesn't That's impinge right. on a lot of people's jobs. All right. So, uh, but but uh, it um, so it doesn't impinge on people's jobs necessarily. I think they also had a write-in situation this year where you could somehow write in to the caucus. I don't know. I'm not. I'm speaking out of, out of my ass on this one, but I seem to remember that. Do you remember that, Rob? Scott, Scott? They, they 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 didn't do it. They said it, it's not the way we do it, so we're not going to do it. Yeah. They thought about it, but they said no. But Change. let's let's forget about all of that. How do you feel about uh, Buttigieg, huh? Yeah, he did good. That's what, you know? I mean, I mean I, I've been, I I've been, I, I'm more and more believing in Buttigieg every day. I mean, I've been with him kind of from the beginning. <coughs> but uh, because I, I look at him, and it's like I feel fresh. I feel... Uh, I've. I, I, I lose a couple of years, you know, but when I watch all these other people like a hunched over Bernie Sanders and a grouchy old Elizabeth Warren and, 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 and a, 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 a Joe Biden who's basically saying, uh, where am I? Uh, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Yeah. Uh, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Buttigieg has kind of looked good to me, and I'm an older person. I should respect age and things like that, but... I, you know, at my age, I want somebody young who can take care of me, okay? And I just think Buttigieg, every time I hear him, I go, this guy is so goddamn smart, you know, and intelligent and, and well-spoken and knows how to wear a suit well, you know? <laughs> it's not rumpled. Uh, 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 I just think that if he goes up against Trump, he can make mincemeat out of him. And, Did and, you see the woman who wanted to change her vote because yeah. she didn't realize he was gay? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's so funny. Well, yeah. well, you know, I mean, that's always going to happen. It goes to show how much, how informed she was, right? But then again, yeah. it's the same people. Yeah. It's the same people who say I won't vote for a guy because he's black, and we had Obama. So you know. Uh, yeah. But that also goes to show how much how much research she did when before she voted. Yeah, yeah. You know what's funny? She liked what he stood for, but then all of a sudden she found out his sexual preference. I got to take my vote back. Which is bullshit. It's like so hypocritical, really. Well, I can't say that yeah, I don't. Let's get I, 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 I don't I, agree with. I can't say that I don't. Every now and then, imagine him with a dick in his mouth. I can't say that I don't. <laughs> you know. Oh, I've never done that. <laughs> But that, you know, that that wouldn't stop me because there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, how do you feel about Buttigieg, uh, Rob? You're a little quiet there, and I'm thinking maybe you... I think there, I think there is an, a, a, a worth... They're all worthless to me on the Democratic side. The only one that I could... Cons none of them. None of the Democrats. But I would vote for Mike Bloomberg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd vote for him too if he was really running. You know? I would vote for whomever. So I'm going to vote for whomever goes up against Trump. You know, but you, I don't. What you got to do is think none of them could beat him. If you're so. going to be in a play, you have to show up for the audition. You know, <laughs> and he's just not showing up for the audition. He's just sending his resume. Yeah, the commercials. Yeah, a lot of ads. A lot of ads, and it it's not working for him. Uh, what I like about the ads is those ideas are getting across to people, however. Right. You know, he's getting ideas across, and I don't think he's really in it to win it. I think he's in it to get his point across. That could be. But you gotta you got to respect the guy for spending his own money and, like, a ton of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, for absolutely. that purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, he, the, he, he went over the edge— when he was at the end of his New York mayor with the soda and all that stuff, he he, he took a dive off the deep end. Yeah, well, I don't, how did he come back? Did he just woke up one day and say, we're going to do away with the sodas? He must have started well, that. I think he's just seeing that people are, you know, sugar is our enemy. 
I mean, sugar is our enemy, and he was trying to do something about that. I, I agree it, with him. I agree it, with him. It's true. But I don't think that you suddenly, I think he was trying to ban even diet sodas. Oh, really? Because they're just as bad for you. Well, yes and no. Look at me. No, I'm 80 years old, and I've been drinking diet soda all my life, okay? <laughs> Well, I'm one big aspartame <laughs> village here. You know what's you gonna know? happen when you die, you're never gonna decompose. No, you stay your body must be good. Don't even embalm me. You're That's what they float say. around in the ocean forever. <laughs> That's, That's what they say that stuff does. Yeah, I, I yeah. Uh <laughs> Who's saying that? I don't know. I, that's what I read somewhere. <laughs> I saw that it 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 uh, <laughs> keep you around for a while. Well, I just feel that. Uh, let me see here, uh, 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 Kevin. How do you feel about Pete Buttigieg? Uh, I I like him. Mm -hmm. I, I did that. Uh, I, I never had a an idea who I was gonna you know like more, and I did that test that who was it? Mike, I think, put it on. That test that he put on that one night before Christmas, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, yeah. That survey, and I went through it, and it popped up with Pete Buttigieg or Mayor Mayor Buttigieg. Buttigieg, yeah. How about how about yeah. how about you, Jeff? How do you feel? Pete, I'm for Pete. You're for Pete. Good. How about you, Scott? How do you feel about Pete Buttigieg? He's okay, but I wouldn't date him. Date him. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I I understand that. I kind of like his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he never bring, does. He bring that guy out, by the way. Yeah, every I once mean, in a while. I know. While, I know that we've we've well, seen him upon occasion. They, he doesn't hide him, but it's not right. like he says. And and uh, here's my significant other, by the way, who's cheering with me now that I've won. I was, but <laughs> they're making. What, what were you saying, uh, Rob? I wonder if he could use the old Bill Clinton methodology, like when he was asked if he smoked pot, he said, I don't inhale. <laughs> oh. What, I, do, well, I don't blow? What? what, what? <laughs> and, you know, he could just sort of. Well, I think they are legally married, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, somebody did an interview last week, I guess it was, with the first men. Mm -hmm. You know, like Warren's <laughs> Warren's <laughs> husband and, and whatever, if they became the first man. Now, do you really think this country is ready for two men in the White House? Really? <laughs> oh, stop man, stop and think be, about that. Do you really I was think thinking about it when they were doing that interview that because that it was all husbands. Before. You know how my, what was, my attitude is? What the, what will what happen the fuck is you you would, that make? It, no, I it, understand yeah, that. Yeah, I agree, I, I agree with you, Charlie. Because here's what I'm saying, Charlie, is that if um, this happens, just like with having a black president in the White House as well, after a while they're going to get used to it. Okay, yeah, it's, it, it's going to be the new normal. All right. Yeah. But How many I, people are not going to go to the voting booth just because of that? Okay, but let's be honest. Who of all these people can go up m the most effectively against Donald Trump? That's why I say that's why we have nobody. Well, I the, say I say it's Buttigieg. I say that every one of them could kick Trump's ass. I don't think so. All they got to do was play him saying, "I'm going to cut Social Security and Medicaid at the end of the year." All they have to do is run on that 24/7, and they will kick his ass. And he'll lose 50 states. That's what Bloomberg's doing. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I just don't, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think, I don't think that, for instance, I don't think Elizabeth Warren could take Trump to the woodshed. No. I don't think Bernie could. Um, I, Biden certainly can't. Bi Biden's already been sullied by Trump. Oh, All right. Yeah. And on purpose. He bumped yeah. him off already. He already yeah. bumped him off already just by the inference that something yeah. went on in the Ukraine. Uh, Boy, when we American get uh, 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 Klobuchar, forget it. Klobuchar, go home. You know, you're not, know you're, uh, you go back to the Senate where you did a really good job, okay? Um, uh, uh, it's just uh, Buttigieg seems to be the one who presents a real difference, you know, and a refreshing difference that, people might get behind. 
You know, so, so you say the words, the first family. And I hate to, wait a minute, he's, like he's gay, and I just said people should get behind him. I, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but here's a question, though. Yeah. No Sanchez. Is it, is it, I mean, come on, they were probably, there was probably a gay president already. They just didn't come out and oh, say, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, who you was it? was gay. Who? who? You can You can Yeah, yeah. And he did okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he was kind of wishy-washy, but he he was he was on the fence over the slave slave no slave thing. He he couldn't decide. So yeah, he wasn't that great. Yeah, and um, uh, you know, but I mean, I just don't. I, I I'm just I don't know. I just I just feel that uh, Buttigieg presents such a difference and yeah. and so much youth there. And he was. I and would he, agree. And he does look presidential. I mean, when you look at a Kennedy or you look at a, a younger Clinton, he looks presidential. He, you know, he wears a suit better than old fat fuck does, you know. <laughs> I mean, what's with the tie that goes down to hide his penis? I don't understand that. He wears long ties. Why is that? Yeah, that's his style. He can't even speak without slurring his words. Yes. You got oh, heavy. oh, that's the latest thing, is the slurring of the words. You've heard that one. The that's issue. a sign of a stroke, isn't it, when you start slurring? Yeah. Yeah. He's on some medications that they don't want us to know about. Right. Yeah. Um, um, and I his, swear he what? had a heart attack a couple months ago when he disappeared to the hospital without telling mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. Can I ask the group something? Mm -hmm, sure. What happens if he's all woke up tomorrow morning and it flashed across Charlie and everybody else? Donald Trump dies in bed. How good would you feel? What would be the first? I thing would be scared I, because then we're getting pants, and that's yeah. It, exactly. no, I, I'd be kind of like uh, gay. Just for uh, less than gay? a year, clutching a picture of Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> I, I want to know where Melania was. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were going to have What's a fish. Their alibi? <laughs> Somebody just wrote here on our thing, Pete sucks. Oh, oh really he, do. he doesn't inhale. <laughs> and your point is? <laughs> That's what I said. It's not new. <laughs> <laughs> but he did really well, though, in Iowa. That was surprising. Yeah. I was surprised that he beat the other ones. By the way, I'm looking Why at the clock. I'm going at the clock, hoping I. No, he spent a ton of money in Iowa. He spent all his time there when Bernie and Elizabeth had to spend, and Amy had to spend their time in the Senate. Well, that they that wasn't be in Iowa. That was I'm was, not surprised that, at all. That wasn't the only reason. I don't. I don't sure, think. But I think I, he worked I, a lot. I, of I, I don't think Klobuchar or Bernie or whatever would have changed any of their fates, because they came back on weekends when there were an in session. And they were, you know, they were, they were, and there were people there speaking for them. I mean, the campaigns went on, even without them. Uh, and uh, uh, so I don't think they were particularly affected by it, and I don't think Pete had the advantage. I think Pete had the advantage because I think Pete went in there and he made his case, and people listened to it, and they liked what they heard. You know, actually, he, Bernie got more votes. It's just the yes. way that stupid fucking system is, like the electoral college, that the person that gets the most vote doesn't doesn't win. No, it doesn't. No, first, uh, the most votes on the first go. Okay, <laughs> then when you start saying, well, if you don't have fifteen percent, you people have to go over to somebody else. They chose Buttigieg. And Bernie got the most votes the second time too. But the third it's time, it's just that the way it was, it went out. Buddha just kept kept getting more delicate. Look, so he's look, quote, go ahead, winner. go ahead, run Bernie for president and get used to having Trump for another four years. I'm saying that Bernie beats Trump by double digits. It doesn't, in all the doesn't polls. matter. That's he beats uh, by uh, more uh, than anybody. Charlie. Beats, beats, that's, Christ, well, he beats, but then Buddha just does. No, but that's... In the poll. Uh, 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 Charlie, that's right now when everybody's going, what would you do? What wouldn't you do? You know, these polls at this point don't mean shit. I'm going to cut Medicare and Social Security after the election. He's come out and said that. That should bury him right there. He'll never get that passed. Yeah, man. We'll we never get what passed. Doesn't matter. He's Coming. promised to try it. Cutting Social Security and Medicare, especially with the with the Democratic Congress, he's never going to get that passed. They would block that, no? No, yes. it's never going to get done. That's no. never going to happen. 
<laughs> he's pandering to his base. And quite frankly, he does away with our Social Security. I'm getting a bunch of old people, and we're going down to yes. Washington with guns. I'll take my mother with you, Alex. She'll run them right over. <laughs> Roll them over with our wheelchairs. Yeah. She hates them. Oh, I'm, I'm getting a stomach ache right now. It's a, some, something with... Uh, I, they they had me do these fleet enemas every time before I go in. And uh, uh, I think this morning my fleet enema just didn't sit well with me. And my stomach's been off all fucking day. Excuse me, folks. I have cancer. Anyway. <laughs> as my, the, tonight she wanted me to take out the garbage. And I said, I can't. She said, why? I said, I have cancer. There you go. You know, and I'm I, I I'm mildly fatigued. I had to. I, I was really I was really fatigued today. And she said, "Would you take the, the the root beer bottles into the into the pantry because we get them delivered?" And it's a heavy box, you know. And I'm feeling kind of weak today, you know. So anyway, I'm I'm feeling better now, but my stomach's hurting a little bit right now. I feel yeah. bad for you. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Don't feel bad for me. You, you're the medical experiment, for Christ's sake. I know. And, you know. You, what, what's going on with you is, you know, and I, I certainly am not haven't had to go through what Kevin has had to go through. There's no question about that. Jesus. You know. So I mean, me. I, this is just, you know. Um, I, I don't know why my you stomach guys is bothering me. Like today. I've had a charmed life. Huh? I said, you guys make me feel like I've had a charmed life. Oh, forget about no toes <laughs> over there. You know. Gotcha. Everyone, uh, if come to think of it, let's see, Tony doesn't have anything wrong with him. Well, I mean, that we can, that we, that, we, that hasn't been, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's physical. Uh, <laughs> and, and Rob, you're, you're pretty, you're in pretty good health, right? You don't have anything wrong with you, do you? Yeah, uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, yeah, you see. <laughs> I can't wait. How old are yeah. you now? How, how old are you now? I'm just hit this January. Hit 63. 63. Wow, okay, you're good well. for 63. Yeah. Do you know what I find? 50. I got to tell you, folks. There's one other thing about growing old that I can't stand: constantly going through the medical bills. You yeah. know. Copays are going to kill me. I mean, my, my copays go anywhere from five dollars all the way up to twenty-five dollars, and you go, oh, "That isn't much." Try like twenty of them in a row, okay? Oh, and, yeah. and then you say, "What the fuck is going on here?" You know. So I, I uh, uh, but it's it's, and then this time of year, here's the part I don't get, and you all face this, okay? I have Medicare. You guys. Some of you have Medicare. Some of you don't have Medicare. You have uh, regular insurance. But always at the first of the year, what do they have? Your deductible. Yep. Now, let me, yeah, let me explain to you. I'm having a $20,000 radiation thing going on here. Oh, that shit. is going to be followed by another $20,000 seed operation. And they're charging me at Medicare a hundred and nine, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, I think I have a, what is the, I'm trying to remember how much the, uh, the, uh, the deductible is, something like $150. And I'm going, why? <laughs> you know, what, being $150 up because I have to pay that out, how's that going to make you any better? And then my, uh, my other insurance, my, my uh, uh, secondary insurance, it's two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, so I got to pay off the two hundred and fifty dollars this time of year at the first part of the year. But how does that make their life any better? They're going to have to be paying on this forty thousand dollars worth of cancer stuff that I'm going through. I just don't understand the, the that or even the copays, which are so ridiculously low. That how do they help with anything? And I, I just, forty million people. Paying a hundred and fifty dollars oh, adds up to a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, but uh, uh, another uh, another million people 
all getting $40,000 operations doesn't, you know? So I just don't understand it. I just, no, I'm so that, this time of the year, I save a billion dollars to pour that. Yeah, well, this time of the year, I get hit with all this shit. You know, yeah, and then no, and the, and no, then and then I can't figure out a bill from somebody, so I have to call the insurance people to find out what this is about or that is about or why they did this. It it turned out that I got bill. Uh, see, my insurance company, my insurance company, my secondary got billed twice for the same item, and I went, "How did that happen?" And they said, oh, they I said, don't pay nothing until they start trying to send you to collections. I just let it all go until the dust settles. <laughs> oh, really? Really? <laughs> wait until they start. I, I just wait till they all start arguing with each other, and then they go, okay, how much you want? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, start suing me because, uh, you know, you can start suing me now, but eventually I'm going to be dead before you can collect. Yeah. Right before they start suing, you go, okay, how much you want? Yeah. <laughs> Save your money. Yeah. yeah. I'm just waiting for you guys to finish arguing. But anyway, so it's that time of the year where I'm starting to put out money for just the the, the, the deductible, which is ridiculous. And I also Yeah, and find... the good thing is you won't have to pay the crap at the end of the year. You, I, go, you I, get a lot of stuff to cover the rest of the year. For those people who go, all those people with Medicare, you're so lucky you get your medical care for free and whatever. I, did, have you looked lately to see, uh, Jeff, what your, what they take out? For your oh, Medicare? Yeah. Well, out I, of your Social Security? Well, oh, yeah. like I want to tell you, at the beginning of the month of January, yeah. all of a sudden I get a bill, and normally it's like, you know, $12 or something for another medication. All of a sudden it's 275 Oh, yeah. No, I had that happen with my medication. That's deductible. But, yeah. but, 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 but here's the thing. What here's the thing. Here's the thing that I, that I can't figure out is I, I, I just uh, – it, it just amazes me that uh, how much I'm having to pay when I'm supposedly not supposed to be paying anything. But anyway, what oh, I was saying is Medicare. I looked at it. They raise Medicare, the monthly premium on it, because, you know, Medicare, yep. your Medicare comes out of your Social Security. I thought it was free. No. 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 Medicare, no. you pay for it. And do you know how much yep. you pay for the Medicare now? How much? A month? I think it's $198. 200. 130. Uh, 130? Is it? No. No, wait, yeah, hold on it was second. 130. Oh, it was 148 yeah, last okay, year. It just went up. I think it's 178, at least here in Texas. Uh, I can tell you right now. I got my bill right here. Wait a minute. Medicare uh, deduction. Deduction. Let me see here. Medicare deduction? What does it come up to? It's not. It doesn't come out of Social Security. Yes, yes it does. It comes out, of, it comes out of your... 144. Really? Mine's 144. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you mean your oh, premium wait a, wait a comes out of your social security? Yeah, but what yeah. what what month was that you for? Have to pay your what, what month was that for? January. January, January, because it says the annual deductible for all Medicare Part B <coughs> beneficiaries in 2019 was 185. I'm sorry, that was my deductible. I'm sorry, I'm not my deductible. That was my premium. I'm sorry. Hundred and eighty-five dollars is taken out of your social security each month to pay yeah. for Medicare. For your premium, oh, yeah. Wait, premium. Sure they tax yeah. You That's your premium. Plus, I'm talking about on premium. top of that, we're, what? I'm talking about premium. Yes. Yeah, That's the premium you pay. Is there Mine's a 144. Different Once people you're on Medicare, pay. you have to pay that premium. Before yeah. you're on Medicare, you have to pay 2.9% every month. Oh, oh, I see. I, yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay, so, uh, but $185. Now, also, we have a secondary, and we pay <clears throat> every three months $530, something like that. So that comes oh, to how shit. much a month? That comes out to how much a month for three months? Well, uh, it's $130, yeah. 140 okay, bucks. Okay, so you add that to my 185 and yeah. as a yeah. person on a, shall we say, fixed income, uh, I am paying... Over three hundred and fifty dollars a that's month ridiculous. for insurance. Yep, but that's not Medicare for all. Medicare for all 
you wouldn't have any premium because it would be in part of your taxes, uh, and your taxes uh, would come uh, out no, to be no, less. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If, it's, if it's Medicare for all, Medicare right now, they take a certain amount of money out of your Social Security. So to say Medicare for all would probably include that. Do they take social no? It wouldn't come out. Of, it wouldn't be part well, of. It wouldn't have any premium and, to pay, so they wouldn't well, be taking anything out of your social security. But, but you see, <laughs> Medicare for all, Medicare right now is you get Medicare, but you also get social security. So they take a certain amount of money out of your social security to pay your monthly premium on your Medicare. So if you, you had Medicare for all, if Medicare you had if you had for. if you had Medicare for all, that would mean there would also be a premium. Mm -hmm. You know, no, I'm, no. The bill that Bernie has in the Senate does not have premiums. There are no premiums. There are no co-pays. There's no deductibles. Nothing. It's all part of. You have a separate tax for that. And if you add up all those premiums and co-pays and deductibles, that's going to be more than what your tax increase for Medicare for all would be because you're not paying sixty million dollars for Kaiser Permanente's. CEO uh, okay, let me ask you this. Do you think Listen that to me, I wrote the damn bill. In spite of the fact that Bernie's uh, uh, promising this, okay, that if I'm elected president, blah, 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 do you think he would ever get it passed? I don't know, but he would fight for it. Well, but none what, of these other well, people would well, fight Why didn't he just start, start fighting for it right now? He's in the Senate. He is fighting for it. That's why he wrote the bill. Yeah. Well, he ain't fighting hard enough. <laughs> He's only one person. Yeah, yeah. You have a lot more power as president. Here's what I don't get. Never pass. Okay. It'll never There's pass. all these people who go, oh, I don't it's want... A, I, every country in the world has it. But I every know. Country, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know, I know, I know. Why can't we do it? If we're the greatest country on earth, how come little Uruguay can do it and we can't do it? Well, well you just said it. You just said it. Who said we're the greatest country in the world? Yeah. Here's another problem. Here's I, I another hear problem. I hear that every day. Oh. From oh. Half the world. Here's another. Half here's people. here's another problem, Charlie, and that is that uh, um, the biggest problem is that we, you know, we uh, I, we can't get Americans to understand. Uh, there's nothing great about their insurance plans. They say we want to. I want to keep my insurance. Really? You really want to keep your insurance? How much are you paying for your insurance right now? You want to keep your insurance? Are you out of your fucking mind? The only people mind. that say that are, are, are the ones that, 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 that haven't gotten sick yet. Anybody that's ever gotten sick and had to deal with the insurance company and have to worry, when I had to have back surgery, it took four fucking months before the insurance company would agree to let me have the goddamn back surgery. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, where, where does where does Bernie say he's going to get the money from? Because I would suggest that if you're going to get the get the money from, we pay twice what yeah. Canada pays. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not what I'm asking. Where are we going to get the money from to pay for this? And I, my answer to that would be, we get the businesses who would normally have insured their people or paid a certain amount of premiums to insure their people to pay for this. Simple, you know. It's plain and simple. Well, you know what they should do, Alex? They should actually, like with Social Security, there should be no cap on Social Security. They no. should just, if you're rich right. and have enough money, once you hit that cap, yeah. just keep taking more. Well, also, the government should not steal from Social Security, oh, yeah, that goes right. which they also do. That's a whole yeah. separate issue. I'm just saying that why should somebody making $10 million a year only have to pay a tiny fraction for their Social Security but poor little Charlie Wallace making fifty thousand dollars a year has to pay twelve and a half percent. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, it's it, look, it's it's terrible, and and it, but but the the idea that people somehow have been given the notion that paying for their insurance, <laughs> paying these insurance companies a premium is a wonderful thing for them. Well, because because that's the that's the fud. That's out there. That's the bullshit that the other mm -hmm. side spreads and people buy into it. It's the same thing when they say, well, you know, you want, uh, you want, uh, you know, insurance for all, then go talk to the people in uh, London and see how long it takes to get an operation. And they, it's, they, it's easy to spread and people it's buy into that really I easy. have talked so to people from Canada. 
And none, I know. Of them, and none of them have ever said that if they had an emergency, it wasn't taken care of. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But but that that when you say that to somebody who makes that argument with you, they're not buying it. They're just not buying into it. They believe no. that you're going to do six months, nine months to get a simple procedure. Yeah. That's what they believe. That's bullshit. Well, but and that's you know what, what they hate. We have life threatening procedures that we can't get the insurance companies to pay off on now. That's People right. are dying, literally dying because the insurance company won't pay for their procedure. Here in the United States, where we're paying all this money. Oh, I, right. I know, yep. I know uh, uh, doctors who are literally going out of business because of the insurance companies. That's right. Yep. It, you know, selling it, their practices to the big conglomerates because they can't afford. To do business anymore. Go to any doctor. Go to any doctor who has his own office. Say with the, usually they're usually roommates with a couple of other doctors as well. That's right. And then look at the office where they deal with the insurance. How many women people are working in there? Usually right. women. Oh, yeah. my mom. So it's like right. two or three people. That's about oh, it. Oh, I hit my one of my doctors. It's like five or six. Yeah, my, yeah. my mom's doctor that I used to say when Alex, she's, he's got yeah. like two older ladies and that's maybe another person. And then I asked the doctor, I asked my doctor once, I said, who pays faster and be, uh, who pays yeah. faster, Medicare or the insurance companies? And he said, oh, Medicare. He said, Medicare. Within, within three weeks, the money's in my account. You that's know. pretty sad. Yeah, yeah. So, But, but they also don't pay... <clears throat> Like they, it, that it's the reason why a lot of doctors don't accept Medicare is because they pay quick, but they pay like the lowest amount, right? Yeah. Well, they, 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 here's what happens. If you accept yourself as accepting Medicare, then you have to accept what they feel a procedure is worth. That's why they pay quick because there's no argument. Right, right. And, and the secondary insurance, which I have, okay, uh, has to agree with that price. Okay, so they're paying based on that price, too. Uh, it, it, and I don't know if there's anything wrong with that because what the government's saying is this is what it's worth, you know. So, you know, you can charge $20,000 for my procedure, but that ain't what you're going to get. Although I hear Medicare p pays a pretty good amount of that 20000 you know. You know what I was going to tell you? You know, when I was a kid, I always thought, well, younger, in my 20s, I always thought, like, when you went to work for a company, they used to say, hey, if you work here, we don't pay you much, but we'll give you health insurance. I always yeah. thought there was a way, like, to keep you down. I really think you'd have an economic explosion if we did have, if everybody had their own health care. You wouldn't be so worried well, about, no, hey, you know but, what, but no, maybe no, I'll but, try this uh, because uh, I'm comfortable. Tony, Tony, you went to work for these companies for the medical benefits. You know, if a company didn't yeah. have medical benefits, they wouldn't get anybody to work for them. And they could treat you like a dog, but you couldn't leave because you couldn't afford to do it out yeah. your medical insurance. That's exactly it. It's almost like you were and, a slave. And they, they, that you were a slave to, to the complex. What were you, like, you, know, what, what, what were you saying? What, what, what were you saying, saying Kevin? Kevin, what were you Kevin, saying? I said that's when they paid for the medical benefits. That's when, yeah. They, yeah. When they paid for nowadays, it. you pay, you know. Oh, oh, you pay a couple. You 30, pay at 40, least uh, forty percent of it. You, you pay quite a bit, you know. Yeah. I, you know I did. Yeah. I signed up for my company last two years ago. Start the HSA, mm -hmm. and so yeah. throw in the maximum amount of money that I can, and I don't use it because right now I don't need money. I make a decent salary. I don't need for anything. So that's growing. And that stays with you until you die. And so I figure when I'm retired and I'm on a fixed income, I'll have that health savings account that I could use for paying 140 or $50 a month for social, for you know Medicare and whatever I need. So I'm filling that account. I wish I had gotten it 10 years ago. Yeah. Because there'd be shit ton of money in it. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. It's been a nice uh, conversation tonight. Uh, once we got into medicine, we lost audience, but fuck them. You know? <laughs> they're going to have to deal with it eventually. Scott, always good yep. seeing you here. Glad you showed up. Sorry Phil didn't, so you couldn't do battle with him. No, I, I just wanted to hear what he had to say. I really did. I yeah. really want to know how he could explain Trump's 
action. Oh, he sent me a note saying I think he was wonderful. Yeah, fuck him. Be anyway, tomorrow. thanks, Scott. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, Albert. Uh, Albert. Rob. It's always good. <laughs> it's all. Uh, any, anytime I see a microphone, I go Rob. Uh, 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 or Albert. I call Albert Rob sometimes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rob. We really appreciate it. Always love having you here. Uh, you too, uh, Tony, and you too, Charlie. Uh, uh, got his blood pressure going up a little bit tonight. And, uh, and Jeff, uh, thank you. Uh, why don't all of you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back. Okay, there they go. That's the citizen panel, folks. And uh, let me just hang up on them unceremoniously here. Go bum, 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 hang up on them, and then sign off uh, the, uh, and, and go invisible on the... Okay, so the next program, which is the intersection with Jack Bishop, will be able to uh, do their, uh, their citizen panel. Uh, we'll see you again uh, tomorrow night, same time, same station, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, Eastern Time, rather. And in the meantime, as always... If you see her, yeah, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.